let's uh, talk together how is the AI made. And it is made from data, from a lot of data from the internet and from other sources. And there are different kinds of data sets. Like you can download all the websites, you can build a crawler, uh, take all these HTML pages and learn your AI model. You can use uh, already downloaded data from Common Crawl. You can use data from Wikipedia if you want something really clear but boring. Uh, you can use data from Reddit or from 4chan if you want some unusual model. So uh, different data sets. For example, Common Crawl is, uh, uh, contains monthly snapshots, about two and a half billion web pages, half a petabyte of uncompressed data, 100 terabytes of compressed data, and 10 terabytes of compressed texts. Uh, there are many social networks, newspapers, code from GitHub, if you want to build a code assistant. There are prepared data sets, pre-processed, uh, pre uh, for example, FineWeb and FineWeb2, open web text, the pile, they are built from common crawl uh, after deduplication, after filtering inappropriate data, and uh, they are uh, ready for LLM pre-training. And the question is how different are these data sets and can we explore them, can we play with them? So what do I do when I am presented with interesting data sets? The first thing I do is I load everything into ClickHouse. Load first, figure out what to do later. <laughs> and uh, many of these data sets are open data sets published on uh, websites like Hugging Face. And Hugging Face hosts uh, these data sets uh, as parquet files and provides an API to get these files. So let me do the first query. I will take FineWeb from Hugging Face. And with this uh, query from the URL table function, I will use Hugging Face API and get the list of all files and their total size. So there are 26,000 of files with uh, 46 terabytes of data. Sounds pretty decent in, from ClickHouse perspective, not petabytes. And there are 24 billion records, 73 terabytes of uncompressed text, and with metadata, it is 81 terabyte of total size. The files look looks like this. And I want to load all of this. So I will do, I will create a table. To create a table, I will use schema inference. So I do create table as select from URL, from a parquet file. And here is my table. And the structure of this table is pretty simple. Uh, text, identifier, uh, domain, etc. Now let me load all of this data in parallel, I will just generate 26,000 insert queries and run these insert queries with 50 parallel uh, processes uh, into ClickHouse Cloud. I created a service in, in ClickHouse Cloud. I scaled it up to a couple of machines. And the question is, how long did it take to load fine web 81 terabytes of data into ClickHouse. And keep in mind, this data sets, this data set represents all human knowledge. It is enough to build a very capable uh, LLM. What is your guess? How long did it take? 10 minutes. <laughs> five seconds, someone said five seconds. Who is more optimistic or more pessimistic? 10 minutes, uh, it depends. So 81, <laughs> you are really optimistic. Actually, it took uh, slightly more than one hour. Uh, and this data set took only 33 terabytes inside ClickHouse, which is less than 46 terabytes of Parquet files, because ClickHouse compresses data better than Parquet. And it is even difficult to tell why. Parquet also compresses with the STD. It also has a column-oriented format, but ClickHouse just does it better. Let's look inside this data set and explore it. So the first thing I want to do is to run a query. Let's select different domains. And the speed, it is really fast, 250 gigabytes per second. And it should process 
uh, these terabytes of data. And the most popular domain is Wikipedia, then The Guardian, some news websites, Business Insider, or even Fox News. So we have a uh, good representation. Again, news uh, and uh, other news. And uh, again, uh, yeah, this is just one query. But this is not enough. I need more data sets. We have fine web, it is 33 terabytes. We have Wikipedia, and Wikipedia will load in uh, five seconds. <laughs> it is just a couple of gigabytes. Archive with scientific paper. If you want your LLM to use passive voice, always uh, you, will <laughs> <laughs> you will train it on Archive. Reddit, Twitter, Blue Sky, Hacker News. GitHub, if you take all repositories from GitHub, it will take about 310 terabytes. And the question is, how do I know? <laughs> yeah, because there is a project named Arctic Code World, but I thought that it is not enough. I need my own Arctic Code World inside ClickHouse. Uh, there is a Flickr with uh, photos. And you know, all these data sets will fit into, inside a single service in ClickHouse Cloud. And actually, it is because everything will fit in just a single service in ClickHouse Cloud. Uh, because ClickHouse Cloud is uh, scalable. And now we can uh, compare these data sets by different characteristics. And the most trivial thing to do is to extract tokens, uh, words from these data sets, and n-grams. For example, given blue sky data, uh, let's create a table with tokens. Very simple table, token and count. And we uh, insert uh, tokens and also uh, n-grams. And we have everything inside ClickHouse. We have a function named literally tokens, and we have a function named array shingles that will uh, convert an array to array of big grams, or three grams, or everything that you would like. And we can compare uh, styles of different data sets. For example, if we compare together Hacker News and Blue Sky by selecting tokens that are the most con contrasting in their distribution. So some tokens that are very specific to Blue Sky and not specific to Hacker News and vice versa. What it will show. And here is a query, let me copy paste it. And it is fast. And on Blue Sky we have words like she, him, love, please, hope, today, so much, yeah, fun. <laughs> and on Hacker News, we have data, Google, system, problem, that it, there are, so boring. <laughs> and I continued comparing all of this stuff. And for example, on Reddit, the most contrasting words are action, level, pretty, content, and yourself. And I'm afraid to say what goes before yourself. Uh, 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 when I analyzed Wikipedia, I was surprised because the most unpopular word on Wikipedia is you. <laughs> now, interesting stuff. Uh, in fine web data set, I have almost every website, including Wikipedia, including Reddit, including Twitter. And I can calculate style fingerprints for each domain. And I will do it like this. Let's take tokens, calculate a hash of token, take a remainder of division of this hash to, say, 1024, and increment a component in a vector. So we will have 1024 dimensional vectors. And these vectors will be styled fingerprints. And to compare these vectors, I will use cosine distance. So let's take a look and find websites similar to ClickHouse by style. And it is fast, and res the results are plausibly red panda, planet scale, source graph, confluent, dgraph, r, r byte. Yeah, it works. Now let's calculate some trends. On the internet, it is uh, ne the next thing to do. This is a trend of word love. Love is still strong on the internet and even on Reddit. <laughs> Clickhouse. Clickhouse is growing. Hadoop. Hadoop is not growing. <laughs> <laughs> Blockchain. Blockchain is 
quite okay still, but not as it was in 2018. Uh, another question, what would I do if I presented with a data set of a billion of photos from Flickr? The most obvious thing is to load this data set into ClickHouse and visualize it. So let's visualize it, it looks like this. Let's zoom in and I can even show the photos, the most popular photos uh, for particular locations, the most beautiful photos on Flickr. And everything is done in real time from ClickHouse. It works, it generates reports and it is pretty beautiful. So this is just a small intro, so takeaways. ClickHouse makes everything easy. Even large data sets, foundational data sets are easy to analyze if you use ClickHouse. And you can put all the internet into ClickHouse and then the internet will probably work faster. <laughs>